ever reflect on how much things have changed in the world of Pokemon card collecting? Right, right now, every single booster pack that you open from the Scarlet and Violet era has a holographic rare in it. Every single one. Uh, it used to be where the holographic rare mattered a lot. Like, that was your chase card. That was your ultra. That was your hit uh, in a booster pack. And back in the day, uh, of the Wizards of the Coast era, we're talking base set, jungle, fossil, gym, uh, Neo series, uh, you would get, like, 12 of them in a booster box. So one out of every three packs, you would basically get a, a holographic rare. And that would be that would be the card that mattered. And then over time, as the game evolved a little bit and rarity evolved a little bit, we had the introduction of crystal cards, uh, shiny cards obviously in the in the Wizards of the Coast era kind of started playing around with that idea of rarity with uh, Revelation and Neo Destiny and then eventually we had the EX era where the holographic rare really stopped mattering a little bit. Now they, they brought it back eventually. We had uh, other rarities that got started like Prime cards and Legend cards and LVX cards and a whole slew of additional rarities but the holographic rare eventually came back a little bit and then we lost it again uh, in, in the black and white era when we had the return of EXs, and then we evolved into GXs, and then Sword and Shield came out, we evolved into uh, V cards, and then we're back into the EX era now, but now every single pack includes a holographic rare. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because the hit rate, the amount of pulls, we study pull rates a lot on this channel, the amount of pulls that you get in a booster box uh, are, are much better now than what they were through the beginning of the Sword and Shield era, right? Like we had uh, Sword and Shield base. We didn't have alternate arts up until Battle Styles. Battle Styles was the beginning of kind of the alternate art chase. So you just had uh, rainbow rares and secret rares and full arts and things like that. And then Battle Styles introduced the alternate arts. And then we had Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies and Fusion Strike. Uh, and Fusion Strike was the last set that we really only got a small amount of hits in a booster box. You only got about eight hits. I actually pulled up the pull rate data of uh, Fusion Strike, so that way we can kind of look at it together here. Uh, but you can see, when we opened up Fusion Strike a long time ago, uh, we opened up 1,728 packs, which was the equivalent to 48 booster boxes, and on average, you got 7.9 hits per booster box. So you would basically get 8 hits per booster box, which was very, very similar to what you got in Evolving Skies, 7.88. Uh, very similar to what you got in Chilling Rain, uh, 7.71. The big difference was, you only had 67 Ultra Rares in Fusion Strike. So even though Fusion Strike is a very bloated set, right? It's the biggest set that we've ever seen printed. Uh, and there was a lot of fear of how is anybody going to master this set? It's actually easier to master than Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies because Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies have over 100 ultra rares in those sets. There's also a lot more alternate arts in Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies than there was in Fusion Strike. Fusion Strike tailed, uh, like, settled down on the alternate arts a little bit and settled down on the ultra rare count a lot. And because of that, uh, pull rates being basically the same as Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain, you were, it was easier to pull, uh, it was easier to complete those ultra rare, that ultra rare segment. It was, it just took a little bit longer to pull all the commons and uncommons and holographic rares and things like that. But if you look, you get 4.5 uh, regular arts per booster box. So if you open up two booster boxes, one of them probably will have four and the other one will probably have five. You're going to get 1.29 V maxes per box. You're going to get half of a full art per box. So two boxes will basically give you one full art. You need four booster boxes in order to pull one alternate art. A full art trainer is basically one out of every two boxes. Now those, we, we consider those basically the same rarity as full art secret rares. Uh, a little bit less than one per box, but if you include that with rainbow rares, uh, rainbow rares are 0.29, secret items are 0.27, and secret Pokemon are 0.2, and then secret alternate arts uh, per box are 0.23. So basically you're going to get one secret rare per box. But in total, only about eight hits per booster box and then we introduced brilliant stars and we had the trainer gallery and things changed because you started getting 12 13 hits per booster box again and then with the introduction of astro ratings you also had these radiant cards that got put into things which made it feel a little bit better uh, and then we started scarlet and violet they had illustration rares, special illustration rares, and because of that you're at a point right now where you're going to get anywhere between 12 and 15 hits per booster box, which is almost double what we got in the Fusion Strike era. Do you remember when Fusion Strike first came out? Uh, Fusion Strike did not do well. It was not a set that people enjoyed. It was not a set that people really liked opening. It was just, it was just meh. It, it, like they had a couple of bangers. They had a couple of really cool cards that people were super excited about, like the Gengar VMAX, the misplaced Espeon VMAX, which still doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to why it was included in 
Infusion Strike. Uh, but for the most part, it was kind of the set that people were like, oh, I'm so it was like the evolutions of the Sword and Shield era because nobody really enjoyed opening evolutions when it first came out. And it was included in every single collection box, every single tin. That was the same uh, for Fusion Strike. Fusion Strike was basically in every every collection collection box, every tin that was out there. And booster boxes were, were at the bottom. They were in the basement. They were at $80, $85 for the longest time, much like what we saw from Battle Styles. A lot of, pe- a lot of people were more focused on uh, Celebrations. They were more, fo- more focused on Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain. And then eventually the release of Brilliant Stars and all the back half of the Sword and Shield set, Fusion Strike did not really matter. And then all of a sudden, once we got through Scarlet and Violet and the first couple of sets in Scarlet and Violet came out and a lot of people were like, well, the Scarlet and Violet's not really doing it for me. I'm, I'm going to go back to Sword and Shield. Then we started loving uh, Fusion Strike again, even with the whole saga about all the stolen hits. You remember those pictures that surfaced of all these hits from uh, Fusion Strike, all these rainbow rares, all these alternate arts. We had the God boxes that were released in Canada where you would get like 20 hits in a booster box, 25 hits in a booster box that was filled with alternate arts and uh, all these secret rares. It was just, it's been crazy uh, for Fusion Strike. And now here we are at a point where Fusion Strike is sold out on the Pokemon Center. Not quite, almost, but booster boxes are gone. Uh, And we've had a lot of content. We've had a lot of noise. We've had a lot of uh, price gains when it comes to Fusion Strike, especially involving booster boxes. That's what we're going to talk about today. But I do want to point out to you guys, uh, because I don't know why we are continuing to be in a situation where people don't utilize the Pokemon Center. The PokemonCenter.com is a website that will always price things at MSRP as long as it's in stock. So if you're looking to buy a Scarlet and Violet era booster box, probably not going to be the best time to go over to the Pokemon Center website and buy a booster box of Scarlet and Violet Base because they're going to sell it for $160. They're going to sell it for their manufacturer suggested retail price. You can find it for much cheaper than that. You can find it for $100. Same thing with Paradox Rift. You can find Paradox Rift for $100. You don't need to buy it on Pokemon Center website. However, a set like Fusion Strike, which is sold out right now for booster boxes, that does not mean it's sold out for every single product. You still have Build and Battle Stadiums on there for $60, a little bit more expensive. Uh, you still have the the build and battle kit the single boot the single build and battle kit uh for $19.99 you still have three pack blisters this three pack blister we're going to talk about this in a second is selling for well more than this on tcg play they still have sleeve boosters in stock sleeve booster packs at three dollars and 99 cents the regular msrp so why are people paying uh over this like just just so you know fusion strike is still available for msrp on the Pokemon Center website. And I just want to remind everybody of that because even with all the content that's out there uh, and all the noise that's out there about how how big uh, Fusion Strike is gaining ground, it's also important to remember that it can still be available for MSRP if you look on the Pokemon Center website. We're going to fly through this real quick uh, to kind of give an update on Fusion Strike because it has stalled a little bit, but still way higher than what it's been. You can see once it went out of stock on PokemonCenter.com, the Fusion Strike booster box blew up in price. So you're looking at January of 2024 basically hovering right around MSRP for a Sword and Shield era booster box. Remember, back then, booster boxes, the MSRP was $144. Like, it changed for the Scarlet and Violet era. It had been a while since Pokemon changed MSRP, but with inflation, raising costs, labor costs, things like that, they decided, okay, starting with Scarlet and Violet, we're gonna we're gonna raise up the price of a booster pack. And it had been, like, uh, nine years since they had done that last. So, uh, Fusion Strike booster boxes started gaining a lot of ground once they went out of stock on the Pokemon Center website. Way ahead of the $85, $90 that you could buy them at for well over a year. Uh, And it jumped up to $244.45 recently. That was its one-year high, and now it's sitting at $242.51. So it's higher than it's ever been, right? Like right now, sitting at $242.51. I don't know if we're going to see it go up a lot higher, uh, because I do think a lot more people are paying attention to Scarlet and Vibe, but this is still, this is huge compared to where it was six months ago. Six months ago when it was selling at MSRP, it went out of stock and then jumped up like crazy, which is insane. Here's the uh, Elite Trainer Box from Fusion Strike. There's still a lot of these out there, and you can still find them for MSRP or less if you look around a little bit. But on TCG Player, the marketplace price is continuing to go up higher and higher and higher. In October of 2023, this was sitting at $32.17. Now, you can't order these anymore from distribution. Pretty much uh, no distributors is carrying any, really, any Sword and Shield era products anymore, except maybe there's a smattering of uh, uh, Silver Tempest, which was the last set, the last main series set from the Sword and Shield block. And because of that, these are starting to get a little bit more attention because they are sold out on the Pokemon Center website. And there still is demand for people opening up Sword and Shield products because they're not they're not feeling the vibes 
from Scarlet and Violet. At least not yet. The jury is still out. We have a lot of uh, slapping sets coming up in the near future here. But uh, Fusion Strike Elite Trainer Boxes have blown up over the past six months and continue to gain uh, more and more ground, uh, more organically, I think, than what the Booster Box did. You can see uh, really a little bit more slow growth here. It's all the way up to $49.05, which is quite a big hike from where it was in October of 2023 and continuing to trend in the upward direction. Here's the Fusion Strike Pokemon Center exclusive. The Pokemon Center exclusive ETBs are an amazing product for anybody to collect uh, because I do think having that exclusive tie, that little Pokemon Center uh, word right there, the verbiage right there, is going to be something that's more in demand uh, in in the long haul. These were going to be a little bit more limited than the amount of boost than the amount of Elite Trainer boxes that they put out there. Now they did reprint this, as you can see, at one point in time in July of 2023, it was sitting at 7109. That's its one year high, uh, and then it got reprinted. It got put back in stock on the Pokemon Center website, and because of that, in December of 2023 it basically dropped back down to MSRP. Now, these were $10 more expensive than the normal uh, normal Elite Trainer Box. These were $49.99, so it did drop down to very close to that MSRP level of $55.92, uh, but now it's starting to creep back up again. It's at $66.34, so it won't be too long until it passes back up where it was in July of 2023, especially now that it's out of stock. Here's the sleeve booster that I was talking about before. These are selling on TCG Player right now for $5.84. That's $1.84 more than what you can buy buy them for on the Pokemon Center website, which is, that that's strange to me. That's crazy to me. I guess unless you're buying just a singular one for $5.84, if you're buying just one, it probably makes more sense to buy it on TCG Player because then you're factoring in shipping is included with this, uh, but you would have to pay for shipping on the Pokemon Center website for any order that's under like $20 or $25 or something ridiculously cheap like that. But in October of 2023, this was sitting at $3.74. Seen a lot of growth. Uh, jumped all the way up to $5.84 recently and continuing to trend upward it has slowed down a little bit, but again, still available on the Pokemon Center website. Here's one of the three pack blisters. This is a more expensive one. This is the Espeon one right here. This one has gained a lot of ground over the past couple months. You can see in March of 2024, it was sitting right around $17, but it's gained uh, over 30% really over the past few months here. It's sitting at $22.99 currently. That's an all-time high for this product. The other the other variant, which is the EV one, I think is selling for around $15, $16, which is still above MSRP, but it is still available on the Pokemon Center website. So you can buy uh, a three-pack blister of the Eevee variant. Basically, that brings it down to $4 a pack, which is basically MSRP per booster pack right there. So it continues to trend up. $15.40 was its low point in July of 2023. It's significantly higher than that now and continuing to move upward. Here's just the loose booster pack of Fusion Strike. Again, available on the Pokemon Center website for cheaper than what it is now. It's sitting at $4.63 currently, which is just off of its one-year high of $4.75. But you can see over the past year, even with all the Fusion Strike packs that were out there, even with all the Fusion Strike packs in existence, all the collection boxes, all the tins, this uh, this booster pack is continuing to trend in the upward direction. That's really what you want from a strong set, even with Fusion Strike rotated out of competitive play. And we're going to talk about why that's important in a second here. The booster packs have continued to do well because of the chase of trying to find that Gengar VMAX or that Espeon VMAX. Here's the Battle VIP Pass. Usually I start out with the more expensive single cards, uh, but I wanted to highlight Battle VIP Pass because we've, we've recorded a lot of content recently about uh, a lot of staples that you can find in your bulk. If you sort through your bulk cards like Switch Card, uh, Pokestop, Stop, Earth and Vessel, things like that. If you're not a competitive player, if you're not looking at playing competitively at all, highly recommend you do it. Uh, but pulling those cards out of your bulk because they do have a little bit of value to it. And once they rotate out of bulk, they're they're basically going to be bulk pricing again. Once they rotate out of competitive play, they're going to go back down to bulk pricing. Here's B Battle VIP Pass, which is a perfect example of that. Uh, so it kind of highlights what we've been talking about over the past couple weeks. At one point in time in October of 2023, when Battle VIP Pass was still uh, in format, it was selling for $3.52. And then you can see uh, up in January of 2024, it had already fallen to about a dollar, which was a few months before uh, competitive formats rotated. Uh, so this would no longer be legal for competitive play. And because of that, it has dropped all the way down to 10 cents. Now, something like Earth and Vessel, Buddy Buddy Poffin, you're going to have those around for a long time yet. So unless they get reprinted, uh, which wouldn't surprise me, 
uh, there's still going to be, uh, you know, a couple dollars of value right there. But uh, some, once they do rotate out, or cards right now that are still good in competitive play, like Switch Cart and uh, Pokestop from the Pokemon Go set, once those rotate out in spring of next year, they're going to be basically all the way back down to bulk pricing. So that's why it's important to take the time, sort through your bulk, and get what you can out of it. Here is the Gengar V. This one is just a really cool looking card. And I think Gengar is important uh, to, to remember that always Gengar does well. Uh, Gengar does really well. You look at Gengar Mimikyu, you look at Gengar from Phantom Forces. Gengar is one of those cards that a lot of people just love that Pokemon. Uh, really cool artwork here on the regular art. Uh, and it's it's fairly cheap right now at $1.47. But you look at the other Vs that are in existence uh, and the other EXs that are in existence. The only ones that are doing really well uh, are the ones that are super playable. And even some of those are basically bulk pricing. You look at all the other V cards that are out there basically that are not getting played right now that are basically... Um, out of format, selling for 40, 50, 60 cents, somewhere around there. But the Gengar V continues to do well. Uh, you can see it is off of its one year high at $2.14. It's sitting at $1.47 right now, but starting to climb up a little bit. Definitely one to pay attention to as we move forward. Here's the Gengar V Max. We talked about this one a little bit last week, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. This card has really dropped over the past couple of months. It was at $409.32 at one point in time. I think it's going to take a very long time for this card to get anywhere close to that again, unless we have another buyout manipulation situation this card has really started to trend downward it has slowed a little bit you can see over the past couple weeks it has leveled off a little bit uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it dropped below three hundred dollars over the next couple weeks here sitting at 302.33 still well off of its 183.70 one year high i don't think we're going to get back to that point uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it continued to trend down somewhere between 250 275 somewhere in that area here's the regular gengar v max we're looking at all the gengar v this one does really well this one does really well on amazon it does really well on tc G player does really well uh, for a lot of people because people love the artwork and people love Gengar. And that's something that's important to understand. We've talked about Gengar as a Pokemon before on this channel, just hi highlighting a lot of the... Uh a lot of the Gengar cards that have been in existence that have been printed. And historically, Gengar just does really well. You can see at one point in time in January, it was almost at $10 at $9.91. It did drop a little bit, uh, but sitting at $7.78, well above of its $5.09 uh, one-year low, which was hit in October of 2023. Here's the Espeon VMAX. Much like the Gengar VMAX, it has slowed down a little bit on its on its free fall, uh, but still well below where it was just a month ago. It was sitting at $344.66. So it's lost about 30% of its value over the past month. And like I said, it has slowed down a little bit, but sitting at 263.21 currently, still well over its one year low, uh, which was 119.50. That was in March of 2024, which is crazy. Wouldn't surprise me if this did drop below 250, somewhere, settle somewhere between 225, 250, somewhere around there. Seller BV is basically back to where it was. Uh, very, very close. It's sitting at $30.66 currently. It was at $47.31. It's crazy how far this card has dropped back down uh, over the course of the last month. You can see, uh, back in August of 2023, it was actually almost $40 again. This card has been ebbs and flows all over the place. Very cyclical movement. In October of 2023, it dropped to a one-year low of $21.46. Basically level at that point. It did jump back up to about $26, $27. But for the most part, stayed right around $24, $25. Then had that explosion explosion in June. And now we're knocking back on the door of a sub $30 uh, sell BV, which is insane. Now, the last cards we're going to look at are Mew VMAX. So if you look at this Mew VMAX right here, the alternate art... In March of 2024, it was sitting at a one-year low of $57.32. It jumped up all the way to 103.03, uh, which was a, a, a quite the quite the big leap there over the course of a few months. Uh, now it has lost a bit of it. We did not cover this one uh, last week, but it's lost over 10% over the past few weeks. It's sitting at $90.48. It does seem to be leveling off a little bit, uh, but wouldn't surprise me if it dropped a little bit more after that. Here's the Rainbow Rare, also following the same suit. It has leveled off a little bit now, uh, but it did jump up to about $45.20. In the middle of June, we saw a lot of Rainbow Rares see some really big growth. This one, the Lugia V-Star, the Giratina V-Star, the Blaziken V-Max from Chilling Rain went absolutely nuts. Uh, but $26.89 was the low point of this one in October of 2023. Relatively level up, up until June of 2024. Then it exploded. Now it's backed off a little bit. And the last one I want to talk about is just the regular Mew V-Max. This was one of the most playable cards in competitive Pokemon history. This was played all over in a lot of different tournaments. Obviously, it won the World Championships last year uh, over in Japan. 
uh, it dropped a lot, right? Up until March of 2024. That's basically when it rotated out of format. So you could no longer play the Mu VMAX. It was all the way down to $1.77. It's currently sitting at $2.09. So it's way off of where it was. But the one thing that I want to highlight for you is that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to be worth money to somebody. Somebody who may have an Amazon account, uh, a storefront who sells on Amazon. You look on Amazon, they're still selling for $7 on Amazon all day. And they're selling fast on Amazon. So these were included. Uh, there was a Mew VMAX battle deck that was out there. You might have a bunch of Mew VMAXs in your bulk. Definitely don't sell it uh, for bulk pricing because you might be able to get $2 or a little bit more for it uh, based on the fact that it sells for almost $7. I think when I looked at the actual seller profit or whatever it is on Amazon, uh, and I'm not overly familiar with it, but it looks like you're going to basically net about $3 of profit for every single Mew VMAX that you sell. So if you have an Amazon account, it's definitely something to consider. A lot of different sales channels uh, have things that sell well. There's things that sell better on Amazon. There's things that sell better on eBay. There's things that sell better on TCG Player. And the key is to know uh, which where to put your, your inventory or your cards or anything like that. Or if you're dealing with just selling some of your cards off to help grow your collection, uh, selling two stores that might specialize in one of those programs uh, where they sell better. So I wanted to feed that information out there so that you have it so you can make the best decision uh, with your Pokemon cards. So that way you, know, you can help grow your collection uh, as best as possible. So I hope you appreciate the content. If you did, uh, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. You know the drill. It goes uh, so far for the algorithm. Uh, helps spread the channel out there a lot more. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk shop with me. Love you guys. I really appreciate it. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with a live. Uh, until next time, peace!